Haiku the Robot is a Metroidvania with a fantastic robotic theme. You play as the titular Haiku, running around this underworld facility with only robots, and there's a virus on the loose causing all sorts of problems. The motives of your character aren't really known to the player, but maybe there's a detective and some power stuff you have to collect and some bosses you have to defeat. It seems like the character is compelled to do these things. So Haiku is a little like Hollow Knight and it's a little like Kunai with the robot theme, meaning this next section is gonna sound familiar, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. That section being what you're doing in this world. And it's exploring. You have to explore almost every room on the map you can find. There's enemies in every room, so you have to defeat them, and they come back often, so you will have to defeat them over and over if you keep traversing the same rooms over and over. You're going to be talking a lot to robots like Rusty here, the traveler, and they'll give you things to help you on your journey. You will be collecting power sources as well, defeating bosses, those are pretty good, and ultimately defeating all of the guardians in the game. The game kind of dumps that on you and acts like it's your problem now when really it just seems like you're some robot trying to live your life. Much like any Metroidvania game, you get more powers and those powers unlock new ways to traverse the world. It's really that simple. There is fast travel in the game, although the nodes are pretty far apart and I don't want to spoil it too much by showing it off. Sorry, it's kind of cool. The beginning of Haiku is kind of rough though. It doesn't have the fast travel and not a lot is given to the player. So uh, here's an example of one of the power cells you will be collecting in the game. Not really 100% clear why I'm collecting them at this point in the game. Haiku lets you just go and be your own character, do your own thing, explore the world. And personally, I wish there was a little more given to the player to start them off, to get them invested in playing the game. I almost kind of quit at one point. Anyway, as I said, the combat is in almost every room and there's a lot of respawns. You will be killing those things over and over again. And they do drop scraps, which you can actually use to heal yourself. Very neat feature. But the combat is fine. There's really nothing to say good or bad about it either way. It just kind of happens. Truthfully, it's pretty easy too, so if you can run by them, you probably should. They don't drop that many scraps, it's not really worth it to fight everything over and over again to collect them. You also don't learn any new combat moves or meaningfully upgrade your weapon. The controls are good though, they're very tight and I enjoyed using them, they feel great, so there's that. Moving on to player upgrades, and you have these chips that can be installed in Haiku. You will have to find slots to unlock more slots, and you will have to find all the chips around. You can buy a couple, but mainly you will be finding them in weird places in the game. While I want to say that the system is very cool, I can't really say it had any meaningful impact on the way I played. I appreciate that I could dash a little more or swing my sword a little faster. Those are nice, of course, but it didn't really feel like it had a huge impact on the way I played and, and none of them really hit hard enough for it to be exciting. It's too bad, it's a cool system, but the developer didn't really get the most out of the system. I do want to point out the map mechanics in Haiku. At first, the map is completely obscured until you find one of these things. I don't know what it is. You break it and then your map becomes revealed. And that way you can actually find all the rooms you want to get to. It's really important to find them or else you'll be running around blind as with any Metroidvania game. Here's an example of a typical boss you will find in Haiku. They usually lock you in a fairly small room with the boss. The boss will run through its mechanics, doing its loop, and usually has three different phases to it. Luckily, the game is kind enough to put a save point pretty close to the boss, so if you do die, and you probably will because you don't know the mechanics, then you can quickly get back there. The bosses are absolutely my favorite part of the game. I do wish there was a little more variety in the level design when you are playing against them. But I mean, this boss is pretty cool. Look at all the moves and how they are using the level to their advantage by hiding on top. 
so it's not a big complaint, but the bosses could have had a little more oomph to them, you know what I mean? Finally, before I finish this video, I want to talk about some of the issues I had with the game. And they're really minor. This game is quite a bit of fun. However, I really wish the game started off with more excitement and a little more definition of the story to pull you in. As an example, I thought the game waited way too long to let the player spend some of that scrap currency. I just kept collecting it and wondering, what the heck is it for? Also, I wish the game had more diversity. This fire level is pretty cool, honestly, but many of the levels do rely on a robot theme, which of course seems obvious. And you will see in the summary that there is a water zone. That's also pretty cool. But the game still could have used a little more diversity when you start off in kind of a scrap heap world, then move on to a factory world. And the flame world is cool. It's just not extremely different from a robot world. I'm sure the developers struggle with this and they're a small team. And so I'm really not complaining too hard about this, but it could have been better. Overall, Haiku is good. It's not great though. I don't think any pieces of this game are gonna blow your socks off, all right? You're gonna play it, you're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna experience this lovely and cute robotic world, but no single piece of this game is a masterpiece. It's not the next Hollow Knight. And that's okay, that's great even because you can sit down and enjoy this little game. Not every game has to be a masterpiece for it to be enjoyed. And I enjoyed this one. I do recommend it to fans of the Metroidvania genre who can't get enough. If you do have Hollow Knight on your list to still play, yes, play that first, then come back and play this one. There you go, that's the order. Sorry, it's way too hard not to compare every Metroidvania game to Hollow Knight. It's, it's the gold standard at this point, I guess. Well, this is the end of the video. There's more to explore. I do have a Steam Curator page. There's a link in the description next to or around the like button. 